Welcome to FreshMy.com. My name is Eric, and we are going to create a brick wall. And this is mainly a texturing tutorial, and I'm just using a flat plane, a NURBS plane. All right, I downloaded a couple of pictures that I googled and found. I found a brick wall texture. This is about as plain as you can get. It's just some colors and some white lines, uh, no detail or anything. We're going to take this. And I chose this for a reason. If I wanted to do a realistic wall, you know, I would try to find a realistic brick wall, a photo. But we can also use something like this. Um, and we're going to make this look kind of realistic. And that's the main point or the main objective of this tutorial. All right, to do that, we kind of need to dirty it up. So I looked for a grunge texture, which is right here I downloaded. Uh, both of these are free textures that I just found by Googling. And we're going to use the dirt on this texture right here to dirty up our wall. Okay, we are also going to create a bump map. And we want to make a we want to render it out to where the grooves, the lines are uh, sunken in. So that way it makes the bricks look 3D. And we also want the bricks not to be smooth looking like this. We want them to be rough. So we're going to rough up the bricks as well. And we'll, we'll create these lines. And then we'll use a fractal to um, rough up the bricks. All right, now this is going to be a confusing tutorial explaining how to combine the fractal and the, uh, the lines. You could do it all in, a, in Photoshop or GIMP. But I'm going to kind of do it into inside Maya, and hopefully that will give some idea. Um, if you're watching this and you're just learning how to texture and stuff, hopefully this will help you to create uh, textures and find workarounds and stuff like that. All right, so let's go and get started. Let's go ahead and work on our textures first. I'm going to take this brick texture, and I'm just going to go ahead and edit it with GIMP. And it's not a very big texture, but it's going to be fine for this tutorial. All right, let me just, I'm going to just kind of open this up a little bit. Now this is 500 by 346 texture. It's actually not too bad. I'm going to go to File, Open as Layers. That way, when I open up another texture, it will go right in there. So we're going to open up our grunge, and it just creates it as a, another layer. All right, I'm going to select the grunge texture layer. I'm going to use my scale tool and I'm just going to scale it up to our brick texture. Hit enter on my keyboard and there we go. So it's pretty easy. Next thing I do, I'm going to take the color out of this. So I'm going to make sure that grunge texture is selected, color, hue, and satur saturation. I'm just going to take the saturation all the way down to zero just to get rid of all the color and click OK. All right, next. I'm going to actually it's probably good like that so let's I don't know yeah let's go like that I'm gonna go ahead and go down to color to alpha and that's gonna allow us to choose a color that we want to get rid of kind of I guess that's the best way to explain it so if we choose white then everywhere this image is white it's gonna be see-through if we choose black then everywhere it's black will be see-through and I want right now everywhere it's white I want that to be see-through alright so color to alpha and it's already set to white. So right there, that's, that's swatch. If I was to change that to black, then if you look at our sample up here, uh, the black areas are see-through now. But I want the, the white areas to be see-through. So I'm going to choose white, click OK. And you can see now we're just, all the areas that was white, it's see-through. So now we have some grunge on our wall. Pretty simple. All right, it looks a little, I don't know, at least in my opinion, it looks a little too uh, fine or something. So I'm going to kind of blur blur the grunge up just a little bit. So I'm going to make sure the grunge texture le uh, layer is selected. Filters, go down to blur, Gaussian blur. And let's change this to one. Zero would be no blur if you've just learned how to use GIMP. Uh, I'm just going to go up to one. It just adds a very slight blur. Click OK. All right, that's good enough for me. Looks like it's trying to process something because my cursor turned into an hourglass. Let's see if we can keep on going, though. 
All right. Um, I'm gonna just change the these bricks look I don't know just a little bit odd the color wise. So I'm just gonna kind of change the color just a little bit. So I'm gonna change the brick layer and actually make a duplicate because we're because we're gonna use one of these to create our bump for the lines the grooves. All right. So I'm gonna hide that bottom layer. All right. This layer here I'm just gonna colors hue and saturation. Let's just kind of play around with it maybe. Just make it a little bit more brownish orange, just a tad. Um, maybe even darken it up a little bit, not too much. Maybe a little bit more saturation. So something about like that. Maybe a little bit darker. All right, so there's my texture. I kind of like that right there. All right, I'm gonna take these two layers and I'm gonna go ahead and merge them together. So merge down. I'm going to hide that and bring this one back. All right, I want my bump to be black and white, so I'm going to go ahead and just get the get rid of the color right off the bat. Hue and saturation, saturation down to zero. Click OK. And I'm on the wrong layer, so let me undo. Switch our, select the correct layer over here. Try it again. Hue and saturation, bring our saturation down. OK. Now this back layer, I'm going to go ahead and lock it so I can't make any changes to it just to be on the safe side okay we got rid of the color now let's make it totally just black and white and all I want white are these lines of grooves so let me go to colors and go to thresh oh, we'll do levels and let's just see if we can kind of go down here so something like that uh, it looks like it's. I can see a little bit of gray. It's probably hard for you to tell, but bring up a little bit more. That should be good right there, or good enough. All right, I'm gonna click OK. Okay, now when it comes to Alpha and Maya, everywhere it's black will is invisible, and everywhere it's white is visible. So if this was our Alpha mask right here, and you put an image underneath this, like an image of a flower, then you would see the flower through all the cracks in this wall but where the bricks are you wouldn't see it would be blocked out you wouldn't be able to see any of the flower now if we reverse this if I go colors and invert now every the where the the bricks are white so if we had a flower underneath this the flower you would be able to see it everywhere the bricks are but where these lines are you wouldn't be able to see it all right so and as far as a bump map goes, it doesn't matter what's black and what's white um, because you can change your bump value, negative or positive. But typically, I like my bumps to be uh, the black areas, controlled by the black areas. All right, um, so here's our two layers. I'm going to save, let's see. File, save image, let's see, save as, and we're going to call this brick bump. Export, 100% save. All right, and this one here, file, save as, we'll say color. I'm just saving my JPEGs, save. All right, so if we bring up our folder, we now have our bump map for the grooves, and we have our brick texture. And already it looks a lot better. All right, so let's go into Maya now. Hopefully y'all kind of understood just what happened there. Oops, go into Maya. All right, here's our wall. Let's just, I'm gonna, do all this in Hypershade. And if you don't know how to get to Hypershade, just go up to your Windows menu, Rendering Editors, over to Hypershade. And we can build all our textures in here. It might make it a little bit easier. All right, let's create a Lambert. When I click on Lambert over here on the left, then it, it puts a Lambert down here in the work area. I'm going to scroll down. Actually, we need our 
our uh, stuff we just created, our textures. So let me open up our pictures folder. And when you've got this hyper shade open, you can just drag and drop stuff in there. So I'm going to drag the brick color over there. And I'm going to drag the bump over there. I just drag them into the work area. All right, kind of zoom out a little bit. Not too much. All right, the brick color we can go ahead and put onto our Lambert. So I'm just going to middle mouse drag the brick color over to the Lambert. I'm going to let go and I'm going to choose color from the list. All right. Now this right here is going to be the hardest for me to explain. I hope I can do it efficient or well enough. Let's go ahead and apply our texture. I'm going to middle mouse drag the Lambert from our work area over onto our wall object. I'm going to make sure I'm in this view panel now and press the number six so we can see our textures. All right, so there's our texture on our wall. Look, looks pretty good. All right. Now the now the hard part. Let me go ahead and let's see how do I want to do this. Let me do it this way. I'm gonna go down here to general utility utilities, and there's a bump 2D. I'm just going to click that and I'm just going to drag it up to the Lambert material and then I'm going to select bump map. Alright, so now we have a bump map node. I'm going to go ahead and take this our bump texture and just put it on there. Default. And now in my view panel I'm going to turn on high quality so we can actually see the bumps. Okay, right off the bat I can tell the bumps way too much. And if you know what if you don't have this uh, little bar right here in your version of Maya, you can go under Renderer, I think, and High Quality right there. So default, we can't see the bump, but if I go into High Quality, then we can see the bump. And it looks like there's some options there, too. I've never really looked at that. Okay, I think I have looked at that before. So you can play around with those if you need to. All right, so let's go ahead and adjust this bump value. So I'm going to pull my hypershade back up. I'm going to double click on the bump node it opens up the attributes for it. And there's our bump depth. Let's knock it down to 0.1. I usually always start with 0.1 for a lot of things. And then I just slowly start bringing it up. So now let's look at our wall. Okay, it looks a lot better. And that's actually not too bad right there. That's pretty good. Maybe even go a tad bit more. Let's see, whoops, 0.12. Let's try point two. Uh, that's a little too much. Point one five. All right, that might work. That might be a little too much. We'll do point one two. All right, let's just go with that for now. All right, so that looks really good right there. We could render it out. We got bricks, but the only thing is, it's too smooth. We want to rough those bricks up, and we're going to do that with a fractal. So let's go into hypershade. Let's look for the fractal over here. I think it's all the way up here under our 2D textures. And go down, there's fractal. So if I click on it, it puts a fractal in our work area. Now, we've already got something plugged into our bump. So we can't really plug this into our bump. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to break this connection here. I'm just going to click on that line. And then you can either hit delete or backspace. Either one, it will break that connection. All right. Now let's go ahead and just just to kind of show you all this so you get used to uh, using the hypershade if you've never used it. I'm going to middle mouse whoops, middle mouse drag the fractal onto the bump default. So this time I just instead of using the texture that we created, I'm using the fractal so you can kind of see what it does. All right. So minimize. And now if you look at our wall, our bricks have a nice little rough texture there. And actually that's could probably use a little bit more so I'm gonna go back into the bump value so I'm gonna double click on the bump node or just click on it since our attribute editor is already open and I'm gonna bump this up to 0.15 let's make it a little bit more yeah I like that a lot better so it's even more rougher so you can see using the fractal roughed it up pretty good alright let's go back into our hypershade 
I'm going to break that connection. I'm just going to click on that line and now I'll just hit delete or backspace. So how can we combine both of these together?